All right, let's jump into the uh, review of our lesson for July the 7th, which is our sixth lesson. It's our last one in 1 Timothy, and then next week we'll begin, uh, you know, on the week of the 14th, we'll begin with the lesson on July uh, 14th is on 2 Timothy chapter 1, all right? Um, this is really a good lesson. I don't think you'll have any trouble developing and having a good discussion about it. It has to do with uh, money and contentment and the love of money and those kinds of things. Um, I, I thought a good way maybe to break the ice on it is to talk about people at their first jobs. Uh, most of us started out with a pretty uh, servant-oriented job that probably didn't pay very much. All we wanted was a little bit of cash. Uh, but hopefully that didn't turn into a career for, the, for most people, the very first job they had. But uh, anyway, Paul once again is telling Timothy that, uh, and, and I, I mentioned this last week, let me reiterate it. In Paul's writings, you can almost follow this pattern all the time. At the beginning of his writings, whether it be Romans or in this case, 1 Timothy, it'll be the same in 2 Timothy. At the beginning of his writings, he deals very, very strongly with doctrine. He's emphasizing truth. He's uh, talking about teachable things. But then the latter part of the book always deals with practical living. And that's exactly what we're talking about today, because after talking about all of the need for Timothy to fight against heresy and recognize false teaching, now he says, here are some practical things. And one of the things he talks about in this text is the fact that we should understand and properly have a perspective of money, all right? And so that's going to be what we talk about. The big idea is this, believers should be motivated by the value of living a godly life as opposed to materialistic gains. Okay? Um, so our text is 1 Timothy 6, beginning in verse 6. And if you've never... Jim, I gave out... Last week I gave out the lessons for 7. And uh, they didn't print out some new ones, so sorry. This will be for the 14th. But uh, Sunday School Central has the lesson for the 7th. Um... 1 Timothy 6.6 6 is a very interesting verse. I've committed it to memory, and it's a good one for you to consider. But it says this, But godliness with contentment is great gain. All right? You want to be rich? You learn to live a godly life and be content with what God has given you. Um, in the Jewish mind, especially when you talk about the Sadducees and some of those leaders of the Jewish community, they believed that if they were wealthy, that was a sign that God had blessed them, and therefore what they were doing was right, even though we know that they were very wrong in the way that they lived and the way they practiced. But related to their wealth, they thought it was a sign from God of affirmation and that He was indeed showing that they were right because they were blessed with finances. Well, that's what Paul is addressing in our text here in uh, the idea of true contentment. And so what Paul talks about is that these false teachers in verses 3 to 5, just prior to our text, he says the false teachers reje rejected the truth of Jesus Christ and they were erroneously, quote, supposing that gain is godliness. That's what it says in verse 5. And then Paul transitions to verse 6 and says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So there's a real contrast right there in the text. Um, Paul then goes on to address this whole issue about the love of money, right? Now money itself is amoral. We understand that. Money, if you hold a coin in your hand, there's nothing good, there's nothing bad about that money. It's amoral. It's our attitude towards it that's important. And so Paul says those who, uh, all of us need to understand, and he's kind of paraphrasing Job when he said, we brought nothing into this world and it's certain that we're not going to take anything out. So we need to have a right attitude toward money. 
And he says, uh, reiterates the idea that the necessities of life are what is important. If we have food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Now, don't misunderstand. Paul makes it clear even in this text that there's nothing wrong with being rich. If somebody's wealthy, that's okay. God blessed a lot of people in the Bible who had a lot of wealth. But they had a proper perspective of that wealth. They used it to help others. They used it to help ministry. And they understood that they couldn't take it with them. So they had a right perspective of eternity related to their wealth. So in, in verse 9, the emphasis on that verse is if somebody will be rich. That has to do with desire. If somebody has a goal of only making money, that is going to end up being a very, very shallow thing. And, indeed, it's going to result in, as he talks about uh, in verse 9, it's going to be re result in temptation, snare, and lusts that reveal a person's sinful heart because they have such an attitude towards money. And that's where he says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Money itself is not evil. Again, it's amoral. But the love of money, the people who will be rich, that desire it and pursue it as their only goal in life, that is when it becomes a snare, and it's, it's wrong for people to live that way. So Paul says, hey, have a proper perspective of money and be content with what God has given you. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Then he does talk about true riches, not just true contentment, but true riches. And that goes on to the idea of the fact that we live a spiritual life of godliness, contentment, service that, uh, in fact, he lists in verse 11 a number of things that he encourages Timothy to do. Uh, live with righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. These are the signs of true wealth. Not what you might have materialistically, but what you have internally. And so he deals with that, talks about fighting a good fight, uh, lay hold on eternal life, that wasn't at all related to the money part being a way of gaining eternal life. He's just saying, keep your perspective right. It's all about eternity. And so don't be consumed with what is temporary. And uh, kind of coincides with what we talked about today. Um, all right. Paul then gives another strong admonition that... Uh, that Timothy have a good witness, and then he even uses the example of Jesus before Pilate and having a great uh, testimony before Pilate. He witnessed a good confession before Pilate. And he's saying, Timothy, you may be called upon to do the same thing. In circumstances of adversity, you may face somebody in powerful position. Have a good testimony. Fight a good fight. Have a good witness. And... Uh, be faithful until the coming again of Jesus. All that's part of the text there. And then uh, he does say to Timothy to charge those who were in the church who were stewards of good works. And at that point, he does, Timothy does have this charge that he's supposed to approach the people who do have wealth at the church there in Ephesus and make sure that they have the proper perspective that they don't get proud, they don't get high-minded, and uh, they recognize, once again, it's a blessing of God and it's only temporary. And they should use that for the furtherance of the gospel. And so Paul talks a lot about what is true riches. Don't put your trust in uncertain riches. And be sure that you have a perspective of eternity, especially as you see the Lord approaching His, His return. Okay? I think this, verse, uh, this text is going to just flesh out really, really nice, and it's going to be a conversation you can have with your group that I think will be really, really powerful. All right? So enjoy teaching it.